Every time I remember you. Next verse. In all my prayers for all of you, I always pray with joy. Because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now. Verse 6. Being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it out until, will carry it out unto completion until the day of the Lord Jesus Christ. As we pray thanking God, let's just thank God that what He has begun during this 21 days of fasting and praying will outlast every single thing that could, what we could ever imagine. That it will not just end out with today only, but on the 31st of December 2022 what God has begun will even be there that the results will last till the very day of the Lord as we celebrate Jesus let us just pray that what what God has begun will endure even till the day of the Lord Heavenly Father in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ we want to thank you Heavenly Father as we celebrate you as a church as a, co a congregation oh God that while many might have thought that this is just a religious activity Lord we know that our relationship with you has been strengthened because we waited on you oh God by fasting and by praying oh dear Lord we celebrate Heavenly Father that we have completed this not because of our own doing not because of our own strength for by strength no man shall prevail for it is not by might nor by power but by the Spirit of the Living God we thank you oh God it is not unto him who is willing it is not unto him who is running but it is unto him whom you grant grace and mercy we have done so, Father God, gotten to, 20, to the 21st day, oh God, because you have sustained us, you have kept us, you have preserved us because of your loving kindness, which is better than life itself. We want to say thank you, God. We want to say thank you, Father. We want to say thank you, Jesus. Para diola kijai, grata tus er barde gilabai, jum mar niela basuze, korda diela brata, so pere felemeneni ala kodosa, juparas or de gedagaba. Lord Jesus, we celebrate you, we celebrate you, we thank you, O oh God, for the signs, miracles, and wonders that have been wrought out in this 21 days of fasting, for every single thing that you have done from the first week, even as you, as you sealed it with our feet washing and the second week as you sealed it with the anointing service and in this third week oh God as you seal it with our communion service as well as our first fruit service Lord we want to thank you oh God for the blessings and the miracles that have been poured out from heaven for the souls that have been saved from the businesses that have been saved from the marriages that have been saved from the spiritual walks that have been revived we want to thank you oh God for healing that has taken place every single thing that you have done oh God it is solely because you are of your goodness of your mercy of your love and kindness which is better than life itself we want to say thank you oh God Lord Jesus we celebrate you Lord Jesus, we honor you. We adore you and glorify you. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. Skir or dele basai katura, brosh or de green ananani ele nusu, zuntos kobere bi algar diele brai, rotos ok bediele gaso, brototus odot skirma, kirma luz or bere di algar diele masa, zebra shugo brande gidala gaba, reba si katalabara, grasus ombre gidala bazo, rontos ubre grigadala gaba, 
Bare sus ordiela branti katala kabazo rontos ok bediela kase ker bordiela brata mata kosh er de griela kazai. Lord Jesus, we celebrate you, the one who sits on the throne of majesty. We want to say thank you for blessing us from a, from on from above on high in the name of the Lord Jesus the Christ. In Jesus' mighty name, Colossians chapter 1 verse 19. Colossians chapter 1 verse 19. For it pleased the Father that in Him should all fullness dwell. It pleased God that the fullness of God should dwell inside Jesus Christ. Jesus is the encapsulation of everything godly. That God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit are encapsulated and embedded in Jesus Christ. When you read it in another translation, it says it pleased God that the totality of God be in Jesus. And when we have the totality of Jesus, we have the totality of heaven. As Jesus is in our midst, the Bible says we're two or three are gathered there I am in they miss what does this tell us where Jesus is God is where Jesus is heaven is I want us to pray as we focus on Jesus that Jesus may have preeminence in this service that each and every single thing that will be happening tonight to this morning that the totality of heaven will break through and manifest in this service that heaven will invade this place that this service as we dedicate it unto God that we will have an encounter with heaven in its totality in Jesus mighty name let us pray rakosh e baradasiko garda di la brada su kater bar di la baza matosh e gabeli ala graso rukosh or bar di la baza rekashu bregida la kazai jere basakut el bar di la kaba re basika da la kaba Zutom Breshker Diela Kaba, Rebas Adogula Barila Kaba, Rebas Ur Gordiela Cabrante, Zus Or Berdiela Kaba, Rush Ogodele Kaba, for Jesus is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. By him all things were created that are in heaven and they are that are on earth, invisible and visible, thrones, dominions, principalities, powers, all things through Jesus were created. And they were created for him he is before all things and in him all things consist and he is the head of the body the church who is the beginning the firstborn from all cre from the dead that in all in, in that in all things he may have preeminence for it pleased God that the totality of God might dwell in Jesus. Lord, we pray that you have the preeminence in tonight in this morning service. That your the, the, the presence be the atmosphere of this place, oh God, be saturated with the presence of heaven. Let the Godhead, oh God, be made tangible and manifest in this morning, oh God. We are praying in the mighty name of the Lord that the Aku Dale Gradila, that even as we seal this morning service, oh God coming to the end of our 21 days of fasting lord you will reward us with a greater measure of your presence oh god that the fullness of heaven will be made manifest for it pleased you oh god that the fullness of heaven should dwell in jesus may the totality of jesus be made manifest this morning may the totality of jesus be made re revealed this morning we are praying for a tangible manifestation of god's glory even as jesus is revealed fully to us this morning in Jesus mighty name Matosh Egebele Garaza Zatosh Ogbredila Gazai Sotosh Ogbredila Kazoi Ros Orberdiela Grada Jore Faniel Berdiela Gratosh Bratatas Ekito Lambre Rotosh Ogregidela Cabazo Sos Orberdiela Gratosh Ogbediela Naza Jepala Pasante Gura Palazico Rabba Sheke de la Caba We are praying for a greater measure of God's presence this morning let the totality of heaven be made manifest this morning let the testimony of each and every saint and soul this morning oh God leave here testify and declaring the Lord's goodness that surely the presence of the Lord is in this place that surely Jesus delivers surely Jesus heals and surely Jesus blesses Lord Jesus before you left you said you will send us the helper, the Holy Spirit. 
and through him we will have a greater knowledge of the father and of the son and he will remind us of all things we are asking oh god for fresh baptism of your presence through the holy ghost this morning you are the one who baptizes in the holy ghost and in the fire we are asking for a greater measure of baptism this morning let each and every single person leave here testifying of your goodness we yield ourselves to you and we say have your way and it's in jesus mighty name we pray let us celebrate jesus this morning celebrate jesus
exalt and appreciate him. Declare there is nobody like him. There is nobody like him. In house of treasures, there is nobody like him. No one can be measured by him. We give you glory, Lord. We give you glory, Lord. We give you glory, Lord. I want you to just put your hands together for the King of Kings that is worthy to be praised. Just how awesome you are. Yeah. Awesome's not enough to show how incredible you are. Incredible can describe just how awesome you are, Lord. Awesome's not enough to show how incredible you are. Say, incredible. Incredible can just how awesome you are. Awesome's not Ah! 
been great. Come on, just open up your mouth, put those hands together, and give him a shout. Woo. Now clap those hands. Come on, come on, come on. Clap those hands to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Declare it this morning. You are God. You are not just people. Hey, he is not just like you. He is a great God. Everybody, come on, let's go. You are God. You are God. You are not just people. You are not just like you.
today I have lined up different kind of food to eat I miss food but the energy for fasting we must finish it here what we began we must finish it here are you ready somebody open up your mouth and shout Oh, 
to you, O oh God, we ask you that you release a fresh measure of your love upon us this morning as we are grateful and thankful, Father God, for each and every single thing you have done for us in these past 21 days, simply because of your love for us. We want to say thank you, Father, and it's in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Come on, church, let's put our hands together for Jesus, the King of kings, the Lord of lords, the marvelous one. Let us celebrate Jesus. Amen. Amen. Welcome, church. You may have your seat. I'd like to greet you all in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. My name is Pastor Khasiso Macharibane. And I'm just here to do your announcement for the very few minutes. But before I do so, I'd like to honor and acknowledge our spiritual father, our dad, apostle, Felix Oko, the angel of his house. Come on, let's celebrate our spiritual father. Daddy, we love you, sir. Amen. I'd like to honor the pastors, the deacons, the deaconesses, the leadership of the church, as well as their spouses. I'd also like to welcome... Amen. I'd like to welcome the church at large. But at this very moment, I'd like to welcome the very first time. If you're joining us for the very first time for Sunday celebration service, may I kindly ask that you stand to your feet. If you've never joined us before for a Sunday celebration service, may we kindly ask that you stand to your feet as we would like to welcome you and show you love the house of treasures way. Amen. Let's just celebrate them. Let's just celebrate them. Welcome, welcome, welcome. 
given to you while you remain standing, given to you by our ushers, is a small leaflet that we would like for you to fill out with your details. At the end of the service, kindly drop it in the offering basket so that we, we may be able to contact you and get in touch with you. Welcome to service and you may have your seat. The vision of the house is to raise an army of believers to take over their world. And the mission of the house is to distribute the treasures of God through the preaching of the word of God. The general announcements of the house are as follows. Every Sunday morning we have a Sunday celebration service that starts at 10 a.m. and goes right till 12.30 p.m. And on specific Mondays, we have marriage counseling with our spiritual father. So if you are newlywed or whether you are married and you would like to join these classes or you are engaged or preparing to get married, kindly register your name in the church office so that the church office can get in contact with you and we can compile all the people who are interested in the marriage counseling classes so that the dates can be announced and you will be invited to those. On Tuesdays is our is our spiritual father will be have is doing counseling with those who are in need or, or are seeking counsel if you need or seek counsel you are welcome to uh, register for an appointment in the church office or alternatively call the church line on 011-943-6102 that is 011-943-6102 please note that counseling is strictly by appointment only walkings are not allowed and counseling is strictly limited to tuesdays only on wednesdays we have our midweek bible study services which start at eight at six 30 p.m. till 8 30 p.m. they start at 6 30 p.m. till 8 30 p.m. and on Fridays we have those guys who say it's too much they gather on Fridays at 7 o'clock for their youth services please note that there will be no youth service this coming Friday but the reboot will be on the 11th of February amen on Saturdays is our sun, uh, Saturday morning prayers with our spiritual father. These start at 8 a.m. and go right till 10 a.m. And shortly after that is the, evangel the outreach team will be going to our neighboring uh, uh, t cities to just win souls for, for, for Jesus Christ. So these are open to everyone. If you would like to join them, feel free to join them in the auditorium from 10 a.m. shortly after the morning prayers. And the special announcements are as follows. As I reiterate, the Alive Youth will be reopening on the 11th of February. And on the, on the 12th of February will be our foundation class and water baptism. Before I even go further, next week Sunday, the Sunday school will be reopening. So parents, if you have babies, toddlers from the ages of 2 till 12, uh, you are welcome to kindly uh, see them. The Sunday school is located just at the back of the auditorium. But this is what the, the uh, Sunday school would like to ask is that in the mornings at the registration desks, the people, uh, the Sunday school will be there, allocated there to receive your little ones. So they will be there at the door. They will not be asking you to or coming in. They will kindly ask that you cooperate with them so that it, they, it makes their work easy. And lastly, for, from the bookstore, there will be a QR code at the entrance that you can scan to see what's coming, what's coming next week. Just so that you know, the bookstore will be having a sale next week on the 6th of February. So this is only on the 6th of February. So you are welcome to go to the bookstore to inquire and find out more information for all the service materials that you will find. Also, lastly, please do know that you are welcome to stream all our services on uh, on on YouTube, Facebook, as well as any podcast channel of your of your liking. You are welcome to go there, and you'll find all of Apostle Felix's uh, material on those platforms. That is it from me. Do enjoy the rest of your service. No other God can be called our Father. I don't know, maybe you don't, maybe you don't have a father, but there is one that we have in heaven. There is no other God like him. Maybe you feel disappointed and you're wondering what to do, but I want to tell you there is a father and he's in heaven. 
And the Bible says that where two or three are gathered in his name, he is there. And so he's here. Connect to him, somebody. Connect to him. No other God can be called a father. No other God can be called a friend. No other God can be called redeemed. No other God's coming back again. Let me hear the church sing it. Say, no other God can be called a father. Declare it. No other God. Him hear you say it. No other God can be called redeemed. No other God can be The choir joined them say, No other God, no other God.
Jesus in this place. Hallelujah. Give him glory. Give him praise. Bless his holy name in this place. He's worthy of praise. Glory to Jesus. Yes, Lord. To the righteous one. The righteous one. hands one more time together for Jesus. Glory to God. Amen. Please, I want you to just go to three people and tell them you made it to the end. You made it. You made it to the end. You made it. You were steadfast. You were faithful. You made it to the end of the fast. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory, 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 glory. We made Thank you, Jesus. You may be seated. Praise God. Amen. You are welcome to service this morning. This is House of Treasures where God lives. Ah, your amen, your amen, if you believe. Somebody holla, God is in this place. Like you are serious, God is in this place. And I know it. One more time, God is in this place, and I know it. For the last time, God is here, and I know it. Are you sure you believe it? Then give Jesus a shout in this place. Hallelujah. Thank you, choir. God bless you. Amen. Praise God. We have uh, quite a number of activities to do this morning. Um, but just uh, before I preach the word, um, we want to remind all parents that um, Sunday school begins uh, this coming Sunday. Please make sure that you adhere to um, taking your children down to Sunday school. Amen. Amen. Praise God. And then um, please, parents, return the forms that you were given to this morning. Um, they gave you forms this morning. Please make sure that you return all the forms. Don't take them home. Don't use them to uh, do other things. Just return the form after you fill them. Somebody say amen. amen. All right. Uh, do we have any bad days in this week? Is anybody's bad day in this week? Amen. Please stand up to your feet. Oh, happy birthday. Happy birthday. We celebrate you. We all join the heavens to celebrate you. We honor God for your life. We thank God for you. Amen. If you are around them, just stretch your hands towards them. Let's pray for them and bless them this morning. Dear Lord, we are so grateful, Father, for keeping our brothers and sisters alive. Thank you for bringing them to the house of the Lord this morning. And so, Father, as a church in unity of faith, we pray for them and we bless them this morning. Father, in this next year of their life, we declare that your faithfulness will be seen physically in their lives. We declare that the hand of the Lord be released now to bless you, to increase you, multiply you exceedingly. May the Lord take you higher and higher. May the Lord preserve you and your family. And may the Lord multiply the work of your hands. 
everything you do this year will succeed you will not be a failure we declare you a success in the name of Jesus Christ father we give you thanks in Jesus name we pray and the church say amen happy birthday and we love you God bless you please put your hands together for them praise the name of Jesus hallelujah all right uh, I just want to if you if you wrote matric this year and you pass can you please stand if you wrote matric this year and you passed glory to God praise God I just on behalf of all the leaders of house of treasures ministries and the entire congregation we want to say congratulations you worked hard and you passed your metric we salute you and we thank God for your life God bless you God bless you may you enter the next phase of your life with God's grace you will fly higher and higher nothing will cut you short in the name of Jesus you will not be a disappointment to your parents you shall bring glory to your family in the name of Jesus if Jesus tarries I declare you great among many in the name of Jesus God bless you please celebrate them in Jesus name glory to God thank you father amen it's such a privilege to see you know children I mean I, I, I'm looking at all the kids that used to be in Sunday school they are all men today oh boy I remember when they used to run around like babies and today they are all men serving in the serving God in the house amen we thank God for your lives praise God hallelujah I think uh, it was brother Skumbuso in the choir and his wife it was their anniversary uh, today can we just pray for them are they in church are they anywhere in church please come come celebrate them celebrate them celebrate them glory to God <laughs> celebrate them celebrate them <laughs> My <laughs> amen you know son and daughter I just want to tell you that we are proud of you we celebrate God for your union I want to I know you didn't give me permission to do this but I want to read the testimony he sent me this morning it says good morning dad we as we celebrate our wedding anniversary uh, this month we thank you and we are so grateful for your words your teachings and your counsel we would have probably been divorced had it not been us coming under your ministry your love for mommy taught us how marriage is done we were wounded and we, but you put us back together you are a blessing to us and we love you amen praise god i want to thank god for your lives amen please stretch your hands towards them in this house we celebrate marriage greatly this is a house that honors marriage we believe in marriage even though in our country marriage is going falling into major decadence but in this house we believe in marriage and so father as we stretch our hand towards this couple we bless them and we thank you for their lives thank you for keeping them together all these years thank you father for their children and now lord as we present them before you we ask that the favor that goes with marriage may that favor be rekindled in greater dimensions today father i bless them as their spiritual father and what you've put together let no man put asunder father we cover them and secure them with the blood of jesus I place a belt of fire around you declaring that no enemy will touch your marriage if Jesus tarries you will celebrate 50 years of marriage I bless you in the name of God the Father the Son and the Holy Spirit and it's in Jesus name we pray and the church say amen God bless you we love you enjoy your marriage amen glory to God hallelujah all right we've been on a fast for the past 21 days it's been amazing it's been amazing i've been super blessed coming here every day some days we come twice a day to come and pray 
God has been awesome. So many testimonies. I don't know if I'll be able to. I just wanted to share these testimonies to encourage people. Um, just a few. I've selected just a few. Pardon me if you sent a testimony and, and we couldn't share them. Please, um, I just needed to read just a few testimonies. It's, it's a lot of them, but I'm going to share a few and I'm going to be very fast. Amen. All right. Uh, all right. Let me start with the first one. Please, as we read these testimonies, please celebrate Jesus as we do them. Amen. Um, I'm glad I waited yesterday. Uh, something broke in my life. I got delivered from something. When I left your office, I was feeling hot and sweaty and went to the ladies. And when we got there, I realized I was on my menstrual cycle. So this person's menstrual cycle had stopped. And that devil let loose on that day. Somebody say amen. I say sorry for all the details. God bless you, sir, for me. Amen. All right, next one. Um, good afternoon, daddy. Trust it all is well with you. I went for endoscopy. I don't know what that is, doc. You should know. Amen. In, uh, I went for endoscopy yesterday and the damage they saw in my esophagus in 2019 is no more there. Alabashaya. My God. Uh, what God cannot do does not exist. I'm so grateful when I was praying, God said, all is well, that my esophagus is normal. I then asked uh, the doctor for a report, a clean report. Uh, next time I go for the scope. Yesterday, the pictures shows that no more damage whatsoever. Praise the Lord. The doctor, that look, listen to this. The doctor asked if he was the one that gave me the first diagnosis because he cannot see what he saw before. I told him, thank you for giving me a new report confirming God's word. Somebody say, thank you, Jesus. Amen. All right. This one had a lump. This one is an essay, so I'm going to paraphrase. It's a long one. This one had a lump in her breast. It was a major, a big lump in her breast. And, you know, uh, prayer began to be offered. On one of the services, she fell under the anointing. And when she rose up, she says the lump had disappeared. Oh, your amen. Please put your hands together for the Lord. She said, I had to go for another scan and the whole test cost me 12000 but that is nothing compared to my health. I am totally free. The lump has disappeared from my breast. Somebody holler, thank you, Jesus. All right, this one says, good greetings, apostle. You are God sent. Yesterday marked seven days, uh, uh, seven days that I was led by the Holy Spirit to House of Treasures Ministries. I'm here to testify today. Yesterday, the Holy Spirit led me again to attend the service physically. Um, and I'm grateful that I obeyed the instruction, obeying this instruction. As a result, I received my complete deliverance from 13 years of a bondage that I got in my, during my divorce. All glory to God and honor to God. More grace and favor to you, Apostle. Are you celebrating Jesus for this testimony? All right. Hi, Dad. A whole testimony. Day four of the fast. God is already doing the most. I decided to go back to school to do health care so I can apply for jobs in UK. But it was, uh, it was just a decision because I had no money. Literally nothing to pay for the fees. 30 minutes ago, my aunt called me and asked me because I told her my decision. By faith, I told her that I will be back to school by next week. Right now, I got a message uh, from the musical director of The Voice SA because I stopped singing and I assumed that I forgot. Uh, they assumed that I, I for, uh, sorry, I assumed they forgot about me. And he says to me, he says to me that uh, he says to help me in the project that will, that will now pay me three quarter of what I need for my school fees. So just, just when she decided, they called her back that three quarter of her school fees she will get from the assignment from the voice SA and he says God is restoring me back and God is restoring my education God bless you amen please put your hands together for the Lord 
All right, this one, it says, good evening, Pastor Felix. I don't usually do this, but I just want to say thank you for, pray for your prayers tonight. I was watching online, and I wanted to come. I wanted to come for prayers, but I have, I have been scared. I used to fast and pray, but today's prayer was for me. Thank you. Probably you don't know me, but I have been there for four years. Not once did I catch a prayer like that. Maybe it, this is time that you spoke directly. This time around, you spoke directly to me. Pastor, I appreciate you. One day, maybe when I'm not scared of you, I will also comment. <laughs> Don't be scared of me, please. I will, <laughs> I will come and tell you the story of my life and how I got saved. He says, I wanted to commit suicide, but you stopped me by your message. He says, on that day that she was at home, I was, it was as if you were standing beside me, telling me, daughter, don't do it. She says, that day I didn't commit suicide and I'm still trusting God for a breakthrough so that I, I can thank you in person. Pastor, you are a blessing to us. You do so much for strangers like myself. Tonight, I just want to say thank you. May God bless you for us. Pastor, please don't share my testimony. I'm very shy. Uh, <laughs> uh, there, there, I disappointed you. Amen. <laughs> All right. Heavenly greetings. This is from a doctor. Heavenly greetings, Apostle Felix. It goes without saying that God's grace has been poured out very heavily upon your life and ministry and you are a true blessing to our generation i'm a child of god born again and i love jesus i'm originally from the free state free state province i'm a newly wed and i got married two years ago and i've relocated to johannesburg in 2020 and i've been attending house of treasures since the conference before then i've tried lots of churches around orlando but the spirit didn't fit my spirit didn't fit in as I'm typing this, I was listening to your sermon online, the principle, the supernatural principle of, of uh, restoration. And I must say, you made a valid point. I just want to, uh, I just, uh, I just want to tell you how the truth, your previous sermons, you've been teaching about marriage and, and my wife and I are really bl blessed. Since we got married, your teachings has absolutely kept us together. Amen. Um, he says, he says, today you spoke the hidden truth of the word of God. I examined myself. And uh, 2021 was a, great, was a great year, but, for, uh, I, but I made lots of mistakes. And I, that I had, that I had, and I had opened, I had, to be, I had to be open, honest about my life. I was on a retreat and God touched me. And today, I want to testify to the glory of God. Somebody say amen. amen. All right. This is from another person. Apostle, thank you for a wonderful service. I pray that I'm able to help the ministry. I never, ever believed in giving money to the church. Halabashaya. This brother is telling the truth. <laughs> Can you imagine sitting here and not believe in giving to the church? Amen. So I never believed in giving to the church. He said, but God has spoken to me about it and assuredly, I will start giving cheerfully. Um, the, ministry, the ministry needs all of us to pull through and build the church and sustain the church. I don't know what 2022 holds, but I want to grow in the Lord and in his presence. Money will come and I yearn to be part of the church building extension. Somebody put your hands together for the Lord. These are the testimonies among the many that I just wanted to share with us. Now, I want to say this to you. Testimonies are pointer that if God can do it for one, he has done it for you. These are things that happened during the 21 days of fasting. That whatever it is that you have believed God for, I want you to know God heard you. Say amen like you are serious. I said God heard you. Why don't you give Jesus praise one more time? All right. Praise God. All right, quickly, I want us to do our first fruit offering. As the Lord has commanded us 10 years ago that we should every first month of the year come with a first fruit offering to him. Amen. 
All right, I'm going to just share a word of the word of God with us and then we will partake of the first fruit offering. Give me Genesis chapter 4 and verse 1 to 7. Genesis 4 verse 1 to 7. Father, in the name of Jesus, we ask that you bless this next hour as we partake of the first fruit offering on the mystery of the first fruit and the communion in the name of Jesus. And the church say, Amen. All right, first and foremost, let me acknowledge um, my, one of my dear brothers, Dr. Mudal, and his dear wife. God bless you. Please, thank you for coming. Please stand up. Let them welcome you. God bless you. Please, can you just celebrate them? Amen. God bless you. Thank you for coming. Amen. And then I have my son, Pastor Stanley, and his wife that just arrived from Nigeria yesterday. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. Thank you for joining us. Amen. Praise God. All right. Is Pastor Darlington in church? I know he was coming. I'm not sure if he's in church. Okay, he is not. Okay. All right. Genesis chapter 4 and verse 1 to 7. Everybody write it down and just look up the screen. And Adam knew his wife, and she conceived and bare Cain, and said, I have gotten a man from who? From the Lord. I've gotten a man from who? From the Lord. Next verse. And she again bare his brother Abel. And Abel was a keeper of sheep. But Cain was a tiller of the ground. Glory to God. And in the process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought off the fruit of the ground an offering unto who? The Lord. So they presented an offering to who? And Abel also brought the first lane. Other versions say the first fruit or the first of his lamb, the firstborn of his lamb or of his flock and of the fat thereof. And the Lord did what to Abel? Can you read it with me? And the Lord had respect. Another version say, and the Lord released favor on Abel. The Lord released favor favor on Abel, had respect unto Abel and unto his offering, but unto Cain and to his offering he had not respect and Cain very angry and his countenance fell and the Lord said unto Cain, why, why art thou wrath? Why is your countenance fallen? If thou did thus well, shall not, thou not be accepted? And if thou doest not well, sin lieth at the door and unto thee shall be his desire and thou shalt rule over him and the church say amen now church of god have been teaching us on some of the mysteries that has been hidden for us and hidden away from the world a lot of these things do not make sense to the natural man the Bible says that the natural man cannot descend the things of God because they are foolishness unto them. But you and I are able to discern them because we are children of God. Somebody says, I'm a child of God. And you have his Holy Spirit to reveal to you the mysteries of the kingdom. The scripture tells us in 1 Corinthians 2, 9, that eyes have not seen, nor ears heard, nor has it entered into the heart of men what God has prepared for them that love him. But God has reserve them for us and the bible says he has kept he, these things are being revealed to us by his spirit yea the spirit sorry revealed to them revealed to us by his spirit for the spirit of god searched the deep things of god amen somebody so the spirit of god has been given to you to reveal these mysteries and the first mystery we did in this month was the mystery of feet washing and you all saw the kind of power that was released in this place when we did the feet washing didn't make sense to anybody but many people were delivered of the chains of satan somebody say amen to that and then we did the mystery of the anointing oil and i mean that was was it was something else last sunday and today we are dealing with this the mystery of the uh of the first fruit and the communion table and so we literally have two services in one. So please pay me attention. So I told you, the Bible says in Mark 4, 11, that unto us it's been given to know the mysteries of the kingdom. But to them which are without, these things are written in parables. God has opened us to these mysteries. There are hidden things inside these mysteries 
that the world does not know but you and I understand the Bible talks about these two young uh, people that their parents gave birth to the Bible say one was a tiller of the ground that means the guy was farming uh, fruits and veggies and all that the other one was a keeper of animals so he was uh, you know rearing livestock and the Bible says that in the process of time that means that in that process of time they were taught about offerings they were taught their father taught them about offerings so now it was time for them to present an offering to the Lord what did they do the first one brought his offering and the Bible said the God that you and I serve the God that does not change that is the same yesterday today and forever looked on somebody's offering and did not have respect on it may God have respect on your offerings let your amen prove that you believe the Bible said God did not have respect but to another he brought the firstborn of his some of the firstborn of his flock and presented it to the Lord and the Bible said the Lord had respect unto Abel's offering now church of God you know that God is not a respecter of persons say amen God has no respect of persons he only respect those who honor his principles can I hear an amen so the Bible says that they brought this first fruit and God had respect for one why because there is a principle in the Bible called the principle of the first there's a principle called what the principle of the first God does not want second place in your life where are all the amens was alone God does not want second place in your life let me tell you something the God we serve the Bible says is a jealous God is a what the Bible calls him a jealous God God does not want anyone anything any whatever to take the first place in your life Jesus came and validated it what do you seek first in Matthew 6 33 the kingdom of God and what else is righteousness you must put God as priority in your life if you want to excel in 2022 God must be number one oh you guys are not in agreement God must be number one in your life Jesus uh, the Bible tells us a story of uh, visiting uh, two sisters that had a brother and the Bible said when Jesus got there the one went to start cooking what she was doing is right I believe she was to cook for Jesus the other one came and sat down and heard the word of God the one that went to cook came back and said don't you why don't you send my sister to the kitchen to help me and Jesus said Martha 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 thou art combat about how many things many things he said about one thing somebody holla one thing it's needful and that part Mary has chosen why she attended to God's word first where are all the amens this morning are you fighting with me she attended to God's word first so we are dealing with the principle of the first in this month of January the Lord spoke to me 10 years ago when this ministry started that every first month of the year we should come with a certain amount to honor him from our finances I know some churches do everything I know churches that tell you to bring everything that's not what I prayed God told me this is what you should do and probably it was at the level where our church is and the day he gives me another instruction I will tell you but this is what he told me that we should do this on a yearly basis to honor him for the year somebody say amen, amen. now I'm gonna just quickly share some things with you Proverbs chapter 3 and verse 9 to 10 Proverbs 3 and verse 9 to 10 glory to God write it down and look up the screen the Bible says honor the Lord with what can you give me this in the amplified probably Let's look at the Amplified Version. All right. Look up the screen. 
The Bible says, honor the Lord with your capital and sufficiency from righteous labor. So you need to honor God from whatever you make. Honor God. That's your tithe. Somebody say amen. You must honor God with your tithe. Church of God, this year, make up your mind that you will not eat your tithe. Listen to me. You know, I, I don't just preach Bible. I am a living example that these things work. Say amen. I began a business many years ago. And um, I... I've shared this so many times. Some of you who have been in this church, you've heard my stories, but I don't get tired of sharing them. Just in case somebody just came in for the first time today. I began this business and I, I started making money. And one day I sold, I used to sell properties as an estate agent. So I sold a property and I made uh, 700,000. How much? Commission. Now you know that's a lot of money. Then I was in Rema Church, Randbeck. The pastor was Pastor Ray Macaulay. And um, so on Sunday, and I've been tightened in church. And the tight brought me something big. And that day I decided, uh-uh. That's the first time I started. I came to church. I looked at Pastor Ray's shoe. I said, maybe it's my tight. I became stupid. And the 70,000 became so big. Satan took that 70,000, made it bigger than the 630 that I'm keeping. And that day, I didn't give my tithe. I went to church, I didn't give it. I used to give my tithe with check from my business account. I didn't give the check tithe. I kept the 10%. And on Monday morning, as my custom is, I woke up early in the morning and I began to pray. At 4 a.m., I began to pray. And I heard the voice of the Holy Spirit as if somebody was screaming in my ear audibly. He says, son, if you do not pay tight on that money, you will make 700,000 your ceiling. And you will never go past it. Beloved, I couldn't wait for the next Sunday. I went on Sunday, paid the tithe. And as I was walking out from the church, service has finished. The Lord said to me, go back and write another check for your disobedience. <laughs> it's, it's not today I started obeying God. Though. And today, I have paid tight in millions. Say amen. Oh. I told you guys last year, the highest tight that came to this church was from me and my wife. The highest. The highest tight. These are not things you should play with. Don't joke with holy things. You are a child of God. Okay, apostle, but Bill Gates doesn't pay tithe. Beloved, you don't know where Bill Gates goes at night. You don't know where these people visit at night. Hey, can I hear an amen? Please, never assume that you are living with normal people. That all these people who are rich are normal. You, you go to bed, they go to bed. No, some of these people, if you know where they go to, there is a certain threshold of wealth that if you get into, you must belong to something. Something must be powering you. If you don't, you will see. Can I hear an amen? amen. The Bible says, honor the Lord with your capital and the sufficiency from righteous labor. And then, he says, and with the first fruit of all, how many of your income? All your income. He says, honor the Lord. And he says, this is the promise. So shall your storage be, storage place be filled with plenty and your vats shall be overflowing with new wine. It will be overflowing with new wine. I know many people sit in church and a lot of times because of where we come from, the things we've been through, we don't want to believe the word of God anymore. But listen to me, church. You cannot throw away the baby and the bathwater. Say amen. Whenever you find something in the word of God, be quick to obey. Let me tell you something, church. There is no careless statement in this book. There is none. Everything God said here, he meant it. And he, he means what he says. And he says what he means. There is nothing in this book that is careless. There is nothing in this book that you will look at and say, I, sh I, I cannot. No, it's not in your place. Can I hear an amen? 
if you rebel against the word of God, you will not, listen to me, you will not, as long as you are in this kingdom, you will not do well. You will not, you will struggle through life. The one area of my, listen, I've told you guys, I've been a tighter for years. There is one area I don't have a problem. That is money. I, as I am here, this boy has no money problem. Say amen. Not because I'm a pastor. I, hello, aren't there many broke pastors? Hello, I've seen broke, but you know broke, men of God. It's not because I honor God. I honor his word. I believe in the word of God and I do it. When I was running business, when our business makes five million, I don't take out deduction, taxes, what I pay staff. I take 500,000 rand check. I drop it in Rema Church. That's how I pay tight. All these pastors, should I? Should I not? Which one do you want? Me, I have a relationship with God. And I love him. He has blessed me. What I have is not, listen to me, he gave me life. He gave me breath. And I worked and I, I'm bringing back from what he has given me. Can I hear an amen? amen? Why are you debating? Church, it takes one sickness to take everything you have. One. There was a certain man in the Bible. The Bible says his farm produced major crops. And he said, oh, now I am blessed. I'm going to build a larger barn. I will put all my crops. And then after that, I will say to my soul, rest for many years. What did Jesus do? Jesus showed up and said, tonight, I will take bread from your nostrils. Let me see who will enjoy those things you are storing up. Beloved, you cannot keep from God. Say amen, somebody. All right. So the Bible says we should honor him. So first fruit is a seed of honor. Somebody say seed of honor. And God says, whosoever honor me, him will I honor. Somebody say, if I honor God, he will honor me. Say amen to that. Are you sure you are saying a loud amen? amen. Give me Exodus chapter 34 and verse 26. Exodus 34 and verse 26. Quickly. Exodus 34 and verse 26. The Bible said, the first of the first fruit of the land thou shalt bring unto the house of the Lord thy God, and thou shalt not see a kid in, the, in his mother's milk. He says, the first fruit, put it back for me, the first of the first fruits of thy land, thou shalt bring it where? To the house of the Lord. He didn't say, give it to the poor. He said, bring it to my house. Bring it to my house. Can I hear an amen? amen? God has a way he has budgeted to run his house. A church like this is supposed to be run by the way God has made plan for the church to be run. Right now, we are planning to extend this building to 5,000. We're starting the project in a week from now. Say amen. amen. Because as it is, the church is full. And our conferences, people come from all over the world. We cannot have this, but we will choke up everywhere. Amen, somebody. So church, this is how God does what he does. And it is through me and you that he funds his church. Can somebody say amen? amen. All right, let's keep going. Give me the book of Romans chapter 11 and verse 16. Romans 11 and verse 16. That's all I'm going to do. Just read scriptures for you. And you have to release your faith as you honor God with your first fruit. Romans 11 and verse 16. This is in the New Testament. The Bible says, if the first fruit be holy, what happens? The lump is also holy. If the root be holy, so are what? The branches. So God says, in the first month, you bring me a first fruit from your income. The rest of your finances for the year will become holy. Can somebody say amen to that? This is God speaking. If the first fruit be holy. That's why a lot of times it seems like many people's offerings are not accepted. Even though you are giving. But you realize the harvest, I'm not getting the harvest I'm supposed to get. Because God needs to honor your offering. And he says the first thing you need to do is give me your first fruit. First thing, give me your first fruit. Somebody say amen. 
Let's look at 1 Kings chapter 17. This is probably the last scripture I will read and then we will receive the first fruit offering. 1 Kings 17 and verse 8 to 16. The Bible says, The word of the Lord came unto Elijah, this is Elijah, unto him saying, Arise, get thee down to Zarephath, where belongeth to Zidon, and dwell there. Behold, I have commanded a widow, a widow woman, that she should do what? Sustain you. Next verse. Next verse. She, he arose, so he arose and went to Zarephath. And when he came to the gate of the city, you all remember we dealt with gates? Somebody say gates. Somebody say my destiny. This year, I have received the gate that will make you flourish in Jesus' name. All right, he said, Behold, the widow woman was gathering of sticks, and he called her and said, Fetch me, I pray you, a little water in a vessel that I may drink. This is the man of God telling the widow that God said to him, Go to, I will sustain you with through that woman. This is a man of God. God gave him instruction that this woman, the way I'm going to sustain her, is by her giving you first fruit. But you go to her. So, okay. The man of God got there and met the woman at the gate and said, please give me a little water first. Next verse. Next verse, quickly. And as she was going to fetch the water, he called her back and said, woman, I want you to bring me a morsel of bread in your hand. Next verse. Let's see what the woman said. She said, as the Lord thy God liveth. So she knew that this man was a man of God. Okay. I have not a cake, but an, I have not a cake, but a handful of meal in a barrel and a little oil of cruise in a cruise in a cruise. And behold, I'm gathering how many sticks? Two sticks that I may go in and dress it for me and my son that we may eat and what? You will not die this year. I say you will not die this year. That we may eat and die. Next verse. Elijah said unto her, fear not. You that have brought your first fruit today, I know the situation is tight. I know this is January. I know you have expenses. God says, fear not. I have taken care of the year for you. He says, fear not. Go and do as you have said. But what do you do? Make me thereof a little cake. Where? First. God sent me. You have something so small. It will not sustain you. You will eat it, finish it, and die. But now, if you take out first fruit from that thing, God says, I will sustain you throughout the year. Next verse. Make me thereof first and bring it unto me and after for you and your son. Next verse. Next one. For thus saith the Lord of Israel, the barrel of meal shall not waste, neither shall the cruise of oil fail until the, late, the day that the Lord sendeth rain on the earth. Can I pray this for somebody here today? In the name of Jesus, I declare your finances will not fail you this year. I say your finances will not fail you this year. Your business will not go into bankruptcy. Nothing that you will do will, will fail in this year. You will succeed in 2022. Somebody shout amen. amen. My God. So this is what the man of God did and the woman obeyed and that's how she was sustained throughout the famine for three and a half years. Church of God, the principle of first fruit is real. I'm going to tell you my own perfect example. I told you, everything I teach you, I practice. Many years ago, 10 years ago, House of Treasure started. This church began. Amen, somebody. The first day of the church, we gathered almost 700 because I invited all my friends in business. Everybody I know, we, we, they all came that day. We celebrated. I mean, I was, I fed everybody. We launched the church. The church took off. That day, the offering came. It was in some serious thousands. A lot of money that I could have just kept. The church is just beginning. But the principle of first fruit. That night, it was around 11 p.m. I told my wife, I said, this money will not sleep in this house. She said, ah. I said, we are taking this money. We drove to our pastor in Senton. And we went there, knelt down and said, we, we promised God that this money will not sleep here. We knelt down and he blessed us. 
and declared words over our lives and we left 10 years later this property our property alone is 45 million only our property church you can is god is not mocked whatsoever a man sow it you can't deceive god that will he reap many years ago about 16 or so years ago i traveled to the united states for the first i've been going to america but not to preach i used to go for holidays so i traveled to the u.s for the first time to preach so i preached in this church in atlanta georgia for a man of god called rafael grant and after i finished preaching they gave me five thousand dollars and my younger brother lives in atlanta and he was driving me around so when i mean at that time he was also uh, the lord was helping him he was not this blessed as he is today so he was really he was doing okay so when they gave me the money five thousand dollars in america is a lot of money so he wanted me he wanted us to share it i said bro we don't share this one we are not. I say it's the first time I'm coming to America to preach. And I cannot take out a dime from this money. He looked at me. He said, why? I said, no, this is my first fruit to the United States. I took that money, flew back from Atlanta, Georgia, went to my man of God, knelt down, placed it at his feet. I said, please pray for me. Beloved, today I refuse invitations to America. Like I will tell them I can't come. I, 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 my, I am booked. A man of God came here one day and he said to me, man of God, every time I look on social media, you are in America, there is a flyer. Do you tell them to invite you? I say, no. He said, then how do you get it? He's, I say, it's God. Listen to me. When you bring your first fruit, the Lord opens the heavens over your life. I can't deceive you, church. This is how we honor God with the first. And if you do, the Lord will honor you. So today, as we are about to receive the first fruit, the Bible said that Jesus is our high priest. Let me read the last scripture. Um, Ezekiel 44 verse 30. Ezekiel 44 and verse 30. Glory to God. The Bible says in Ezekiel 44 and verse 30, quickly, please give it to us. He said, the first of all the first fruits of all the things, of all things, and every oblation of all and of every sort of your oblation shall be the priest." You shall give it unto, un, you shall give unto the priest the first door, that he may do what? What will the priest do? Cause the blessing to rest upon your house. Now, church, we know that the Old Testament is a, a type and shadow of the New Testament. The Old Testament is Jesus concealed. The New Testament is Jesus revealed. So. This was brought to the priest. Now, in the New Testament, the Bible says in Hebrews 6.20 that Jesus has been made our high priest according to the order of what? Melchizedek. And so now, when you present this, you are presenting it to your priest. Say amen. So church, as we are about to receive the first fruit offering and go into the communion service shortly, Everyone that has their first fruit or you've transferred it into the church account, may you please stand. Please stand. You have your first fruit. Please stand. You have your first fruit. Please stand. You've done transfers. Or um, today we have the swiping machines for the bookstore. If you can swipe your first fruit, Please, can you stand and join them as we pray? If you can swipe your first fruit, join them as we pray. Um, please, can they get the swiping machines from the bookstore? Can we just hurry up? Are we ready? All right. You guys, can you just come to the front? Please, can you come to the front? You have your first fruit. Can you stand? Thank you, Lord. The Lord spoke to us uh, 10 years ago that every first of the first month of the year everybody should come with a thousand two hundred to honor him as first fruit and it's not because i don't know why he gave us that figure but he that he said to me and he confirmed it by somebody else who was in the church as at that time confirmed it the person had no clue came to tell me this was what he saw in a vision 
And so from then, we have been honoring God with our first fruit. Now, Church of God, those of you who are standing, can you please step forward to the altar? Step forward to the altar. Please step forward to the altar. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We honor you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Please step forward. Step forward. Just find your way. Please spread. Spread out. Spread out. So that come a bit forward. Come a bit forward. Just come close to the altar. Come close. Come closer. Come closer to the altar so that others can have space. Please, can you just step forward? Step forward. Amen. Praise the Lord. All right. I want you to lift up your first fruit offering. Lift up your If you have done the transfer, you can raise up your hand. Just raise up your hand. If you have done transfer to the church account, or you're going to swipe, those of you who will swipe after this prayer, you may stay behind. The people are at the door that I come in. You can go that side and swipe your first fruit. Lift it up before God. Say, Heavenly Father, like you are serious, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for the privilege to honor you with my substance and the first fruit of my increase in 2022. Lord, by faith, I release this as a seed of honor to honor you, my Father, and let you know that in 2022, you are first in my life. Everything I do, you are first. Therefore, as I give this, you promise me in your word that you will have respect for every offering I will bring in 2022. Therefore, I declare, let favor be released on my life in the name of Jesus. Let the grace of God in the area of finance be released in my life. Today, I declare that my storehouse is blessed. I will not lack in this year. I will live in plenty. I will enjoy abundance. Sickness is far from me. Oppression is far from me. I receive the favor of God to prosper in 2022. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Now hold up that offering. Father, you said they should present this to the house of the Lord. And that the priest will cause the blessing to rest. Lord, as you have ordained me in this place. You have ordained me and set me over this people. Lord, I stretch my hands towards them. And I declare every one of them that has obeyed this principle. I command the blessing of the Lord that make it rich and added no sorrow. Rest on your houses today. Rest on your finances today. Rest on your family today. In the name of Jesus. Somebody shout amen. One more amen. The last amen. God bless you. You may drop your seed on the altar. Drop it on the altar. Drop it. Just leave it on the altar. Leave it on the altar. Just drop it quickly and go. Please drop it quickly and go. Please drop it quickly and go. Drop it quickly and go. Please drop it. Drop it. Drop it quickly and go. Drop it quickly and go. Drop it quickly and go. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you as you do so. God bless you. Those of you who want to swipe, just go to the door on my left, which is on your right. Go there and do your swiping. God bless you. God bless you as you obey God, as you honor God. God bless you. God bless you. God honor you. God honor your faithfulness. God honor you and your family. God honor your finances. You will never struggle this year. I break the chains of poverty in your life. And I declare everything holding you back, let you loose today. You will fly like the eagle. In your finances, you will never struggle. In the name of Jesus. The Lord bless and honor you in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. And the church say, Amen. Put your hands together for the Lord.
Now, those of you who, don't, who did not give it, please don't feel guilty. Something I know with God is if you don't have, it does not hold you responsible. Now, I want to say this. As God blesses you, some of you need to promise him, Lord, if you bless me, I will bring this. I'll bring it. I will honor you with it. Please do. Please do. Amen. All right. Um, are we done yet? We're still busy? All right. Ushers, can you help us so that we can have the communion? All right. This is going to take us a while. There's a lot of people. How many machines are we using? Two machines. Can we hurry up, please? Hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. Let's put our hands together for the Lord one more time. I'm going to be blessing us shortly as we have the communion table. Amen. I'm sure, does everybody have their communion element? Do you have your communion element? If you have it, let me see your hand. Okay, all right, put it down. If you don't have it, let me see your hand. If you don't have it, let me see your hand. Leaders, can we just distribute to these people before I just, we do the communion service? Praise God. Your life will not be the same after today. Say amen like you are serious. All right, praise God. All right. Amen. Praise the name of Jesus. Glory to God. Okay. Thank you all. Thank you for obeying God. All right. Quickly, as we receive the communion, um, just want to say a few words. And after the communion, I will prophetically declare the blessing of the Lord over your life for these 21 days of prayer and fasting. And the church say, Amen. All right. No choir, don't come yet. Just hold on. I will tell you when to come. It's fine. All right. Praise God. Now, the, uh, the mystery of the communion table. I'm just going to say a few words on this. I've done it a, 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 a detailed teaching on the communion. I'm not sure if they still have that CD on, um, on uh, because then when I did the teaching, we were not on, on social media at all. We were not on YouTube. Uh, we only started our YouTube and social media, media account, I think it was last year or last two years. So when I did the teaching, a lot of you were not here. Um, there are three kinds of the body of Jesus that was spoken to us in the Bible. How many kinds? Somebody shout three. Somebody say three. All right. I'm going to talk to us the about the first one. The first one is the physical body of Jesus. What is it? The physical body of Jesus. First John chapter 4 and verse 2. First John 4 and verse 2. Give me first John 4 and verse 2. Quickly. The Bible says, Hereby know ye the Spirit of God. And every spirit that confesseth that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is what? Is of God. So, the Bible tells us that even though you and I were not there years ago, Jesus came physically to this world. Do you believe it? Can I hear an amen? amen? Is there anyone that doesn't believe that Jesus came into this world? Was born of a virgin Mary? If you don't believe, we won't blame you. We want to explain to you. Say amen. All right. So the Bible tells us that every spirit that confesses that Jesus came in the flesh is of God. We believe it. Jesus came physically. When he came, he walked on the earth for 33 and a half years. He died on the cross for humanity and went to heaven. He died, paid the price for our sins and went to heaven. The scripture tells us so. Historians even said so. Everybody believe it. Say amen. Even the Muslims believe it. So he walked on the earth, came, and that was his physical body. That physical body did a lot of miracles. Somebody say amen. amen. Jesus healed the leper. He healed the sick. He healed the blind. Jesus raised the dead. Jesus uh, did money miracles. He got a fish out of the mouth. Uh, sorry, money out of the mouth of a fish. He did a lot of miracles. Fed 5,000 people with two uh, fish. Uh, sorry, how many fish? Five fish and two loaves of bread. So, he did all that miracle. Somebody say amen. 
physically with his body. All right. So we believe that Jesus came in the flesh. Now the second part of his body, which I want to talk about, is uh, called the body of believers or the church. Somebody say the church. I've taught you this before. Um, please, our media team, can we look for that message and load it on YouTube and on social media? Please. Very important. 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 27. 1 Corinthians 12 and verse 27. And then we'll have the communion. 1 Corinthians 12 and verse 27. Now you are what? Everybody look up and read with me. One, two, go. Now you are the body of Christ and members in particular. Somebody say, we are the body of Christ. So you and I are the body of Christ. This is the second body mentioned in the Bible. I told you there are three kinds. This is the second one. That's why you don't treat your brother and sister bad. Because you are members of one body. That's why we must walk in unity. That's why we must love one another. Can I hear an amen? When you gossip about your sister, you are gossiping about Christ. I know you won't like that. Say amen, somebody. Say amen, somebody. What's that? Prayer request? First fruit. No, please, can you take it to the ashes? Please, please, please. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. All right. So when you gossip about, talk bad of your brother, your sister, you do something bad to your fellow brother in Christ. Listen to me, church. You are dealing with Christ directly. Because that person is a member of the body of Christ. It's important. Church, this is why many church people are struggling. The Bible says, how can you say you love God that you don't see when you hate your brother that you see? Am I talking to believers? You, you can't say I love God and I, I, I so love God. God is my father. And then my brother or sister that I see, I say I hate them. No, it doesn't work like that. We are members of the body of Christ. Somebody holler, I'm a member of the body of Christ. Look at your neighbor, say you are a member of the body of Christ. So we are brothers and sisters. Say amen to that. Do you believe it? All right. Praise God. Colossians chapter 1 and verse 24. Colossians 1 and verse 24. Colossians 1 and verse 24. He says, Who now rejoice in my suffering for you and fill up that which is behind of the affliction of Christ in my flesh for his body's sake, which is what? What is the body of Christ? Somebody say the church. So when you open your mouth and say all churches, all pastors are criminal. Who are you saying is a criminal? The Jesus Christ. Be careful what you say about the church. Jesus said I will build my church and what will happen? May you not be a gate of hell. May you not be what? A gate of hell. Don't be the type that insults the church listen to me there will be mistakes made by the church church is led by human beings they're not led by robot they're not led by jesus <clears throat> they are led by people in the flesh and just as they are human beings as you are you make mistakes they will make mistakes can i hear an amen, amen. say amen like you are serious amen. church they will make mistakes and moreover, besides that, Jesus told us that false prophets will arise. So you are not going to stop them. He's not talking about them on Facebook that will stop them. Many false, in fact, he didn't say false. He said many false prophets will arise. And in South Africa today, we have many. May you not be found under one of them. I exempt you from every false prophet. The day you get to any of their place, God will take you out. Today we have people endorsing false prophets. There is a man that died recently. You all know him, very popular man from Nigeria. We don't mention names. And I need to warn people. 
Let me tell you, I'm a man of God. I hear from God. He's a very popular man. Every, all of you know him. Everybody is saying, oh, he's a man of God. He's a, that man is not a man of God. Hear me and hear me well. He is not from God. And I'm talking about the man T.B. Joshua. He is not a man of God. I said it from this altar. That man is a sorcerer. He's a, he's a ma Listen to me. I have been privileged to talk to one of the ladies that used to be there. If you know the type of things they do it behind the scene, may you not be found. All of you, some of you now are tuned to his channel. May you just from today take off from that channel. Say amen, somebody. I'm your, listen, I'm your father. I have a right to protect you. He is not from God. I said so. If, if I'm lying, let God correct me. Amen. Because I, I, I need to, some of you like things. You like where they tell you your name, your ID number. You don't know your name. You don't know your ID number. What is your problem? You need a place you'll be taught the word of God. People have itchy ears today. That's why so many false prophets are thriving. Falsehood is all over the place. Church, you listen to me. If you meet a man of God, you will know by their fruit. You shall, oh, apostle, but he helps so many poor. Beloved, Bill Gates gives money to the poor. Is he born again? You don't use that somebody is a philanthropist, make him born again. When did the the, the, the measure for salvation shift to being good. The Bible says your, all your goodies are filthiness. They are what? Like filthy rags before God. I need to correct this because a lot of you in your houses, once you get home now, you tune to his channel. You won't hear the word of God. You want where they will push you and you will fall. And after you fall, nothing changes in your life. Beloved, Believe in this book, read this book, get revelation from this book, you will get any kind of miracle. I have tested this, I have tested it, I have seen that God is God honors anyone who re He reveals this book to. Please, I want to warn you so that you be careful. Don't listen to all these nonsense people are saying. There's so many false prophets. You go to a church. And they're telling you counseling is seven and a half thousand. There's a church that used to be in Pretoria. You all know the church. The man of God had ran for his life. Anybody that charges you money for counseling is a false prophet. I said so. Listen to me. Church, I am not, I have passed, the, I'm, I'm 50 years old now. I've passed the stage of being afraid of anybody. I can tell you to your face, you are false. You don't charge money for the gospel. No, if you are a pastor listening to me, somebody comes to you, you charge the money to see you, you are false. Jesus has left you. That's the truth. Freely you have received it. Freely you give it. Please be careful, be careful. These days are not the days to jump from church to church. I listened to an idiot that called himself a man of God. He's been sleeping around with many ladies. And they were accusing him on social media. You know what he said? He said, why are you people accusing me? Is it your problem? I'm using my own private path, not yours. A prophet. And some of you go to him for prophecy. May God deliver you from falsehood. We have a generation that want miracles. They, listen to me. Church, didn't we read testimonies here? Are they not miracles? But this church, I don't want to make this church a church of miracles. Can I hear an amen? When you come here, don't come for miracles. Come to hear the word of God. When you get the word, miracles will happen in your life. I'm tired. We're raising a generation of Christians who don't know they are left from their heart. They won't read Bible. And tomorrow they come out and say they fell victim. A false prophet slept with me. This one did this. This one did that to me. My friend, first and foremost, when you meet a man and he begins to show you some things that there is red flags, what do you do? Run! Don't stay there. 
Am I talking to a believer? I've told you, if you come to see me and they tell you by the reception, you must pay money to see apostle. If you don't ever come back to this church. It's too many crazy things we are doing. Stupid things we're doing on the altar. In the name, prophet, people are selling oil, selling handkerchief, sell, they sell everything. Now, I mean, one of the churches you all know has oil. One is prosperity. One is deliverance. Where, from where did we get that from? No. Jesus called it, he says, my father's house is called the house of what? Prayer. But you have made it a den of what? Robbers. Thieves. Church, please be careful. I don't want you to find yourself in all this mess. Because I have to say it to you as my congregation that God has brought to me. That there are people you stay away from. One of my daughters went to visit a church, came back blind. In this church, the first prophet came out and said, Abrr. Next thing, they brought my daughter blind. We had to believe God for her eyes to be open. Believe God to get her to start seeing. That's why, don't go everywhere. Oh, my friend, you know what happened to her? Her friend invited her for some birthday or baby dedication. That's how she went. She left her own church, went to support her friend, came back blind. Be careful. Where am I saying don't listen to other men of God? But find out their fruits. By their fruits, you shall know them. You know people by their character. Say amen. We have greedy people today on the altar. Men who are just doing their own things. Church, please be careful. Be careful. I'm not the one that is afraid to say, listen, we have witches in this country who say they are prophets. Witches. By the time somebody starts organizing wheelchair, I mean, there is a church, you all know, that used to be somewhere in the north. When you look on their altar, there is, how many witches? Over 50 or 100. One of the boys in the church came to my office, not in the spirit, physically. He was the one they used to send to buy the witcher. Then they will pay one, somebody there. And then the person will come sit there, sit, they will put him there. As the man of God is preaching, receive! The person will rise. Everybody will start shouting, yay! Yay! Meanwhile, after service, they organized 3,000. Your son on ENCA, a lady that went to a church, one of the pastors in the church gave her HIV positive report. Please, when the man of God starts, when service starts, you need to stand up and say you want to believe God to be healed. They showed it on ENCA. How many of you saw that interview? Yes. She, a, just imagine you come to this church, Pastor KG gives you a letter saying you are, when you are not, you know what she said? I, am, I have never been HIV positive. They gave her the letter and she received it and she went. When the man of God started praying, she came out with the letter and said, I'm HIV positive. Man of God prayed. And then they, she went back home. The next service, she came back with another report from doctors, I'm healed. Church, listen. May you not go to a church to seek for prophecy. The Bible says we have a more sure word of prophecy. This book. Listen to me. I've read this book cover to cover many years. My life has changed through this book. I lived the most successful marriage as a pastor. Until my wife passing, I had the most wonderful marriage. My children are blessed. I have children who love God and are serving God. I've run my life with this book. I ran a successful business. Today, through this book, I'm running a successful ministry. I can tell you every kind of success you need is here. So that I help you. I don't want to come to your house and I see channel so and so. If I catch you. 
you don't play my message. You are playing, playing channel so and so. That's why you are, you, are, you are different. Because you don't know whose daughter, whose son you are. You are confused. Imagine every day your child comes back home and leaves you, go to next door to eat. By the time you know it, they will poison her. Because you are feeding from everywhere. You are eating junk. Let me leave that alone. All right. The last one. As we go on. The third one is the mystical body of Jesus. And this is the one that we are going to partake of right now. Matthew chapter 26 and verse 26. I just wanted to clear that out. Because there is... Okay, I don't want to say that. But please, church, be careful what you are listening to and what you are feeding yourself. I needed to clear that. Listen, the last time I mentioned that man, T.B. Joshua, on this pulpit, one of my sons came to the, to the office, looked at me and said, preach the word, leave T.B. Joshua alone, and he left church. Today, his life is a mess. Listen to me. God forbid that I will tell you that somebody is... For, I asked God, is this man your servant or not? He said he's not. I asked God. So why would I be afraid to tell you? All of you who still have his calendar in your house, burn that thing tonight. You have his calendar. When you want to pray, you kneel before his calendar. One day, me and one of my sons went to Nigeria to visit Nigeria. We were coming back. Some people were coming from South Africans and pastors. They were carrying 25 liter uh, water, two sides. It's written there, S-C-O-A-N. Haba, you went to fetch water. A pastor that reads Bible. You went to fetch water from Nigeria to South Africa. You are a, you, you are a dummy. Listen to me, oh. I know some of you are not happy. I have burst your bubble today. I wanted to clear this has been heavy in my heart. I will not lie to you. I won't lie to you. A man that came out and said, I've been born again from my mother's womb. That's a lie from hell. You don't, nobody gets born again from their mother's womb. I will never come to this church again. Bye. <laughs> Listen. I need some serious people here. I need people that want to go to heaven. Not people that are here for their own agenda. I need serious people. I want you to make heaven. I was telling them during prayer in the week. I said my greatest desire in this life is to make heaven. Not to be here. This earth is nonsense. Church, may God help you in Jesus' name. Matthew 26 and verse 26. As we look at the third part of his body, which I call the mystical body of Jesus. The Bible says, as they were eating, Jesus took bread and blessed it and break it and he gave it to the disciples and said, everybody read the nest. Take it. This is what? Who said it? He took, let's assume they were eating our bunny bread. He took out of that bread. Gave it to them because it's a mystery. Listen, if you were sitting on that dining table and they give, somebody is alive. He gives you bread and he say, take, eat it. It is my body. Won't you tell him you're crazy? That's when you are in your normal sense. But you see, when you are spiritual, the Bible says, he that is spiritual judges all things. Take, eat it. That thing you are about to eat is not normal. It's Jesus' body. Take, eat. This is my body which was broken for you. Say, take, this is my body. Next verse. And he took the cup and gave thanks 
from the drink they were drinking, he took the cup, saying, Drink ye of it all. Next verse. For this is what? This is what? Was Jesus giving them a cup of his blood? No, it was from the juice they were drinking. He called it the grape vine, that it was grape juice. Okay, he says, For this is my blood, the blood, this, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. Next verse. He said, But I say unto you, I will not drink henceforth of this fruit of the vine. So it's fruit of what? The vine. So we know we're talking about grape juice. Somebody say amen. All right. He says, Until the day when I drink it new with you in my father's house. And the church say amen. Give me Mark 14 and verse 22. Mark 14 and verse 22. Today we are just reading scriptures so that you know these things are mysteries from God. Somebody say amen. And as they did it, Jesus did what? What did he do? Everybody say it out loud. What did he do? Jesus took bread and blessed it and break it and gave it to them and said, take it. This is what? Somebody shout, my body. So that thing you hold in your hands is not ordinary. Please, I, that's why I always encourage families, take, partake of the Holy Communion as a family, regularly. Do these things regularly. Do it regularly. I take communion after prayers. I just break bread on my own. Amen. Next verse, quickly. And, he's, he, and he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, drink all, they, sorry, he said he gave it to them and they all drank of it. Next verse. And he said unto them, this is my, this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for how many? For how many? Then next verse. Next verse, quickly. Verily, verily, I say unto you, I will drink no more of this fruit of the vine until the day that I drink it new in the kingdom of God. So we are going to have this same communion with Jesus as soon as we ascend with him. Somebody say amen. Luke chapter 24 and verse 30. We are about to close. Luke 24 and verse 30. Choir, you can now come. Luke 24 and verse 30. And it came to pass as he sat at meat with them. What did he do? He took what? What did he do? He took bread, blessed it, and broke it and gave it to them. What else happened? And their eyes were what? So the communion opens your eyes to see Jesus. Those of you who don't understand Bible, when you read Bible, it's like Arabic. Start breaking bread before you read Bible. Take bread, take juice, bless it, and say, Father, as I take this, when I read my, the scriptures, may my eyes open to see what I've never seen before. It says, their eyes were what? Put it back quickly. Put it back. Their eyes were open, and they knew him, and he vanished out of their sight. So this, Jesus did repeated the communion table after he had resurrected. After he rose from the dead, he came back to the disciples. Do, church, can I tell you something? Do you know that if you were living in Jesus' time, you wouldn't know it's him? Some of you thought, oh, I wish Jesus was here physically. If Jesus came here, none of you will know him. Everybody knew him by revelation. Everyone who knew him knew him how? Just like today, if you have to know the Lord, you must know him by revelation. How can somebody be with you all the years of his 30, for almost three and a half years of ministry? Now he dies, rises from the dead, comes back to a dining table with you, and you can't recognize him. And he was in physical form. The Bible says, as they ate the bread, drank the cup, immediately their eyes opened, and they knew it was Jesus. And he vanished out of their sight. And then lastly, 1 Corinthians, as we pray, chapter 11 
and verse 23. That's the scripture we use. This is now Apostle Paul, who was not part of the disciples, who was not uh, part of the twelve, who was not part of the apostles. Paul only came into the scene after Jesus had died, resurrected. I think it was five years after Jesus died that Paul gave his life to Christ. Okay, watch this. Then Paul writes into us now. You know, he was locked up in prison. So most of his letters were written from prison. So he now, while in prison, got a revelation. He's never partook of the communion. He now wrote a letter to the church in Corinth. And this is said, this is what he told them. Guys, while I was in prison, I have received of the Lord. Of the Lord, that which I now deliver unto you. That the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was he, he was betrayed. What did he do? He took, so Paul got this revelation not from any disciple. He got it by himself. He received it from the Lord. Somebody say, I received from the Lord. So he, he, he said to you that this I received from the Lord, that which I now deliver unto you. That the Lord Jesus Christ, in the night in which he was betrayed, he took the bread. Next verse. And when he had given thanks, he did what? He break it and said, take it. This is what? Somebody say, right now, I'm about to eat Jesus' body and drink his blood. Say it like you are serious. Right now, I'm about to eat Jesus' body and drink his blood. One more time, right now, I'm about to eat Jesus' body and drink his blood. Say amen. You are releasing your words by faith. Next verse, quickly. He says, when he had given, sorry, and when he had given thanks, sorry, keep going, keep going. Oh, well, yeah, hold on. He break it and said, take it. This is my body, which is broken for you. This do ye in remembrance of it. He says, do it in remembrance of me. So as we are doing this, it's like a memorial service for Jesus. We are doing remembrance. And listen to me. When you do his remembrance, he shows up. Next verse. And after the same manner also, he took the cup, and when he has supped or cried, he said, this cup is the New Testament in my blood. And as often, as how many times? Somebody shout often. Say, you must, you must do it regularly. And as often as you drink of this cup, sorry, where am I now? Do it as often as you drink it. In what? Remembrance of me. Next verse. For as often as you eat this bread, look at often, how many times he showed up. As often as you eat this bread and you drink this cup, you do show the lost dead till he comes. What does this statement mean? When you eat the communion, you drink, you eat the bread and drink the cup, God says you will have a testimony to show for why I died. Where is the amen? amen? You will have a test. You will have something to show. God will give you tangible proof after today. Amen. I say God will give you physical proofs after today. Amen. Say amen like you are serious. Amen. Next verse. Keep going. Keep going. He said, Wherefore, whosoever eateth of this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily, how do you drink it unworthily, shall be guilty of the body and the blood of Jesus. What does that mean? I'm going to stop here. If you are here and you are not born again, you are not supposed to eat of this cup. That's what he says. Now every head bowed or eyes closed. I'm going to pray for a set of people. You are here this morning. Listen to me. This is the most serious part of this service. Everybody quiet. Nobody moving around. Everybody gets seated. This is a very critical part of this service. All heads bowed or eyes closed. You are here this morning and you are not born again. Listen to me. Beloved, as much as you are in church this morning, if you don't have a relationship with Jesus, you are not born again. You can't remember the day you got born again. Listen, this is the moment God has been waiting for you to do. You are not born again. You have not made Jesus the Lord of your life. And you say, Apostle, I want you to pray for me. I don't want to go to hell. People don't go to hell because they sinned. They go to hell because they rejected Jesus. Church, 
why will you reject Jesus, the one that came and died for your sins, the one that came and paid the price for all the mistakes and all your past wrongs? Why would you reject him? It costs you nothing. So you say, Apostle, I'm not born again. I've not made Jesus the Lord of my life. I want to give my life to Jesus. If that is you, where you are, raise up your hand. Raise up your hand quickly. Raise it up quickly, quickly, as we partake of the communion. Raise it up, raise it up. Don't be ashamed, raise it up. You are not born again. You have not made Jesus the Lord of your life. You say, Apostle, I want to give my life to Christ today. Nobody is looking at you. Don't be ashamed. Raise your hand up quickly, right now, quickly. Thank you. Thank you. Raise it up. Keep it up. Don't be ashamed. Keep it up. You say, Apostle, I once gave my life to Christ. But right now, I don't have the relationship I used to have with him. I've kind of backslidden. That's what drove me to church this morning. I would love to rededicate my life to Jesus. If that is you, you know that what you used to have with God, you don't have it anymore. If that is you, raise your hand and join these people. Raise your hand quickly. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Those of you whose hands are raised up, I want you to do me a favor. Just stand to your feet where you are. Stand. Stand up. Nobody is looking at you. All heads bowed, all eyes closed. Stand to your feet. You want to give your life to Jesus? You want to rededicate your life to him? Stand up where you are. Don't be ashamed. We all did this someday. All of us. And if you deny him today, he said, I would deny you before my father. Why would you deny Christ? This is one of the greatest opportunities you will ever get in your life. And I want you to pray this prayer with me, mean it with all your heart. On this day, as we end our 21 days of prayer and fasting, say with me, say, Dear Lord Jesus. Everybody support them as we repeat this word. Say, Dear Lord Jesus, I believe with all my heart that you are the Son of God. You died for me, and on the third day, you rose from the dead. I now give you my life today. And I ask you, come into my heart. Be my Lord and my Savior. Forgive me all of my sins and my past. And I declare boldly that Jesus is the Lord of my life. Thank you, Father, for saving me today. In Jesus' name. All heads bowed, all eyes closed. As I pray for them, Father, in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Lord, for each and every precious soul that is standing here today. Father, all these people, as they are standing, there is a rejoicing in heaven over the salvation of all these people. Lord, we rejoice with the host of heaven. And we declare, Father, upon their confession in our Lord Jesus Christ and in the resurrection. Father, as a church, we declare their sins forgiven. Father, we ask that you cancel their name from the book of death and write it in the book of life. And we pray that unto the return of our Lord Jesus, grace is now made available for these ones to make it to heaven. Father, I break every curse in their life and I speak the blessing of Abraham into their spirit. And I declare, may the grace of the Almighty God be upon you to serve him now and forevermore. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. God bless you. Put your hands together for the Lord. Amen. Now, church, those of you who are watching us online, if you just did this, you gave your life to the Lord or you rededicated your life to the Lord, I, wanna, I would like to invite you to House of Treasures Ministries if you live in Johannesburg. But if you live outside of Johannesburg, I want to encourage you to please go to a Bible-believing church close to you. Go and serve God with other brethren. God bless you as you keep watching. Let's put our hands together for our online viewers. Amen. All right, time for us to receive our tithes and our offerings. Tithes and our offerings. Amen. Now, how many of you know what you did was your first fruit? Amen. You have your tithes, you have your offerings. Let us give unto the Lord. Amen. And the first fruit we just did is one off for the one off for the year. Except God gives you increase and you want to give the first fruit. Whatever you do for the first time, and there is a there is something that comes from it. You're supposed to give your first fruit. Somebody say amen. 
All right. You have your tithes and your offerings? Lift it up as we pray. Lift it up as we pray. Father, we just want to thank you. We honor you, Father, for this precious seed in our hands. Lord, we are grateful for the privilege, the honor for us to give our tithes and our offering. You said to us that we should bring the tithe into your storehouse, that they may be meat in your house. And we should prove you now here with, if you will not open to us the windows of heaven. My Father, I pray that, Lord, as we honor you with our capital in tithes and in offerings, Lord, may you receive it. And Father, multiply, multiply, Lord. Your word says that whatsoever we give up for the sake of the kingdom, that we shall in this life reap a hundredfold. Thank you, Lord, for multiplying our seed and giving us a hundredfold harvest. Thank you for opening the windows of heaven. Thank you for blessing your people in 2022 abundantly. Thank you for raising men and women of stature in the area of finance, multi-millionaires, billionaires in this church. Thank you for raising them out of this congregation. We give you the glory and the praise. In Jesus' name, we pray. And the church say, Amen. All right, give your offerings, choir. All right, now for the communion, quickly, as you give your offering, if you don't have the communion element, can we see you wave? Is there anyone that doesn't have the communion element? Anyone? All right, there's somebody right there. Please lead us. There's someone right there. I see hands raised. Any other person? Anyone else? All right. Bread of heaven, send down from glory. Many things you were on earth, a holy king, a carpenter. Take it from there. You are the living one. Bread of heaven, send down from glory. Redeem God with us a living truth. Oh, what a friend we have in you. You are the living awesome ruler, awesome ruler, the Gentile redeem. You are God with us a living truth.
together for the Lord. Amen. All right, please can you open the seal on your communion element and take out the bread? Take it out and let's lift it up as we pray. Said, so this is my body which was broken for you. Father, the Bible says on the night in which you were betrayed, your son Jesus was betrayed. He took the bread and he broke it. And he said, take, eat. This is my body which was broken for you. And as often as you eat it, eat in remembrance of me. Father, we bless this bread as the body and the flesh of Jesus. The body that was broken for us on the cross of Calvary. Father God Almighty, the scripture tells us that the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead, raised that body from the dead, lives in us. And that spirit shall quicken our mortal bodies. Father, as we partake of this bread today, I declare, everyone at the sound of my voice, who has any kind of diagnosis, sickness, disease, Father, as they eat this bread, that sickness dies instantly. Say amen like you are serious. That sickness dies out of your body now. Father, I ask that your spirit quicken our mortal bodies as we partake of this. Thank you for the victory that we have through Christ Jesus. Thank you, Lord, that we are victorious. Thank you, Lord, that we shall conquer territories in this year. Through this communion today, I declare, Father God, that your people shall possess their possessions. This year will be the year where, for the first time, in, some people will have 10 million rents in their account. 100 million rents in their account. I declare it so as a man of God in the name of Jesus. Father, go into action by this communion table as we eat in the name of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And it's in Jesus' name we pray you may eat. The scripture says after the same manner he took the cup and after he has sobbed he said take drink this is the cup of the new testament in my blood and as often as you drink drink in remembrance of me father we present the blood of jesus this cup we present it as the blood of jesus i bless this cup as the blood of jesus Father, we declare that as we drink of this cup, the Bible says we overcome the devil by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of our testimonies. And we love not our lives unto the death. Father, we drink in remembrance of you. And the Bible says in doing this, we do show the Lord's death till he comes. And Father, the Bible says, whosoever drinketh this unworthily, Father, for this reason, so many are sick and so many die. So that means, Lord, when we drink it worthily, we will live and we will not be sick. Therefore, as we partake of this cup, Father, I declare every sickness is gone from our bodies. And I declare in 2022, we shall live and not die. Everyone here today, we see 31st night of 2022 December. In the name of Jesus Christ, Father, we drink in victory. We drink knowing, Father, that because of the price that you paid by the blood of your Son, every single prayer request in this offering basket is now a testimony. In the name of Jesus, that each and every one, just like we read testimonies today, everyone here will have their own testimonies. We declare from today, your lips will testify. Amen. Father, we now drink in remembrance of you in the name of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. 
and it's in Jesus name we pray you may drink lift up your voice and begin to thank him give him thanks give him thanks give him thanks somebody thank the Lord thank the Lord thank him thank him for the 21 days of prayer and fasting give him thanks give him the glory let him know that the rest of this year is blessed for you father I've waited upon you my strength is renewed Lord I thank you Lord that I will run and not be weary I will walk and not faint thank you that this year is blessed for us thank you father that we our greatness is imagining this year thank you Lord in Jesus name we pray amen stretch your hands towards this altar Heavenly Father in the name of Jesus for the past 21 days we've been going on this journey with you where we waited on the Lord father we've come to the end of our fast my father I present this congregation to you and everyone that partook of this fast Lord God of heaven the Bible says you are a rewarder of them that diligently seek you now Lord as they stretch their hands towards this altar I pray for each and every one whatever you have asked God in these 21 days as the Lord liveth before whom I stand the Bible say Eli said to Hannah the God of Israel has heard your petition which you have asked of him now therefore I declare that over your life the Lord God of Israel the Lord God Jehovah has heard your petition the Lord God Jehovah has heard your prayers the Lord God of hosts has answered your prayers therefore as you live here today as his mouthpiece on the earth as someone that represents him on the face of the earth today I stand by my apostolic anointing and by the grace of my calling and I declare today you walk out here with your testimonies you walk out from here with your testimonies you walk out from here with your testimonies you walk out from here with your testimonies in the name of Jesus Christ I declare you shall live and not die every sickness is your body is dead right now your body is healed from the crown of your head to the sole of your feet in the name of Jesus Christ I decree and declare that no weapon formed against you shall prosper in the name of Jesus you shall go forward in the name of Jesus you will advance I declare you shall multiply in the name of Jesus Christ I bless your business I bless your job I bless your finances I bless your marriage I bless your children I bless the work of your hands in the name of Jesus as I declare over you the Lord God Jehovah hears me today and I decree and declare your steps will be ordered to your testimony your steps will be ordered to your destiny help us your deaths will be ordered your steps will be ordered to your destiny help us to your vision help us in the name of Jesus he said behold I will give these people favor so that when they go they will not go empty as you go from here today you go with favor I release the favor of God on your life I release the blessing of the Lord on your life I release supernatural wealth on your life I release the grace for expansion on your life I declare from today grace for visibility lands on you now everything you do will be speaking in the nations of the world if Jesus tarries you will make news on CNN you will make news on ENCA you will make news on SABC in the name of Jesus may the Lord give you solution to this world's problem every single problem in the world I pray today my God releases wisdom to solve them may God give you the wisdom he gave Solomon may you be counted among the rich may you be counted among the rich in the name of Jesus Christ from today I stand here as God's representative any witch that does your life to kill you I stand by the word of the Lord that says suffer not a witch to live anybody that seeks your life and will not repent today I end their lives 
I end their lives. I end their lives. Anyone seeking to cause you pain in 2022, I stand by the word of the Lord that says that he killed men for their sake. Lord, anyone that seeks to cause these people pain, Father, and not repent, the same way Pharaoh was drowned in the Red Sea, let their destiny be drowned in 2022. Let their destiny be drowned in 2022. In the name of Jesus, every altar that has been, er that has been erected for you, erected against you, make making sure that you don't thrive in 2022, as God's mouthpiece, that altar and the priest, as they refuse to repent, their journey ends by 12 midnight today. Their journey ends by 12 midnight today. I terminate their lives tonight in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, on this day as we end our fast, I pray for South Africa. I pray for our nation. Father, may the hearts of every single person that lives in South Africa, may their hearts be open to the gospel. I declare South Africa saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, Lord, I pray for our president and everybody that is in authority. Lord, I pray for them that you give them wisdom to lead this nation to her destiny. Father, anyone in our governance, in the government of South Africa, who is there to take this nation backward, who doesn't want the progress of this nation, doing everything possible they can to make South Africa retrogress. Father, I stand on this exalted altar and I overturn their seats. I overturn their positions. My father, their bishopric and order we take. In the name of Jesus Christ. Father, remove ungodly men from offices and replace them with the righteousness of God. Father, we bless South Africa. The economy of this nation will soar. The economy of this nation will flourish. In the name of Jesus Christ. Father, I pray for our children. Our children will be the best in their schools. I make them today the head and not the tail. In the name of Jesus. None of you will bury your children this year. None of you will bury your children this year. Your children will live and become great men and women. Today, I announce you as a great man. I announce you as a great woman. In the name of Jesus Christ, from today, your greatness emerge. Lord, I prophesy this in the holy name of Jesus. That Father, everyone at the sound of my voice, my Father, by your mercy, that no one here will be buried this year. Father, this ministry has gone through a lot of pain by the loss of our spiritual mother, my precious wife. Father, the Bible says that affliction will not arise a second time. Therefore, I decree in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that, Father, no one here at the sound of my voice will be buried in 2022. Father, you are the giver of life. Give life to your people. Order our steps. And I bless you today. As we round up this fast, I declare you a testimony to the world. A testimony to the world. A testimony to the world. In the name of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. You are blessed. God bless you. I love you all. Go and enjoy yourself. Break your fast. And we will see you on Wednesday. God bless you.